Today's episode takes the speed of the game on the road to the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in downtown Cleveland for a special show with supermodel Carly Claus and your host, Dan Gilbert. If you can't keep up with the speed of the game, you can't play. Welcome to another episode of the Speed of the Game. I'm Dan Gilbert, and uh, we are here in Cleveland, Ohio. And with me is one of the world's most known and admired model, among other things, coder, technology coder, computer coder, software coder. It's very kind. Carly Kloss. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's, my, it's my honor and pleasure. And welcome to the Midwest. I know you were in Detroit earlier today, and then we came here to Cleveland. This is the last yes. Cavs game of the year. Go Cavs. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. The, we have the lottery five weeks I from know. tonight. I'm big, big night. I'm not sure when this is going to be actually aired. Maybe it'll be post-lottery. Maybe it'll be pre-lottery. But Carly, I, I can't thank you enough for being here. And yes, St. Louis, Missouri. Yes, I, I'm from St. Louis. I feel very at home here in uh, in Cleveland, in Detroit. You know, the Midwest is 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 my is my home t- home town. I don't know. There's something really special about the Midwest. So, so in Missouri, when you were growing up, you were mm-hmm. born in Chicago, moved to St. Louis when you were like one. I was born in Chicago. My dad's an ER doc. My mom's an artist, and I'm one of four daughters. And my parents, at one point, I guess when my dad was in residency, working you know twenty hour shifts, my mom was like, "Okay, we have to move home." Well, uh, that's where she's from. So that's where my my entire mom's family's from. And so I grew up in St. Louis and had the most amazing, picturesque kind of childhood in the Midwest. Probably not too dissimilar from. Uh, what it's like in in the suburbs of Detroit or suburbs of anywhere America, yeah. you know, de- whether it's you know Detroit or downtown Cleveland or St. Louis or the suburbs. Tell me what percent of I guess somebody's childhood happiness is associated with the city or their family or the community or you think it's yeah. all of it. I think it's probably a combination of all of it. For me, a big part of why I love St. Louis so much and, and where I come from is because of my family. I'm really close with my family and my mom's, you know, I went to the same high school that my mom, my aunts and uncles, my grandmother went to. Did they have I, the same teachers? Like, did you? Have yes, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that, uh, you know, an art teacher that basically kicked me out of class one time was like the art teacher that kicked my mom out of class like 30 years earlier. It's, so what did your mom do and what did you do? To Um, to get kicked out. Well, I got kicked out because I started working. Um, My very first week of high school, I started freshman year on a Monday. And Mm -hmm. by Friday, I was... I got this call um, and I had started modeling, but I wasn't doing anything really serious. And I got this call to come to New York for the weekend for a casting for New York Fashion Week. And I'm 15 years old. My life at the time is like... You know, I was a freshman cheerleader for about a minute, um, and I, I was thinking about high school and you know driving. And I'm six feet tall. Maybe I'm five eleven at the time. So five eleven by fifteen. Yeah, by fifteen. See, I wasn't five eleven until I was thirty. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, so 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 I start school on a Monday. By Friday, I'm in New York, and I get I walk uh, an exclusive for Calvin Klein, and it immediately starts my career. Like overnight, puts me on the map. And so I went back to class and that art teacher that that kicked me out, he kicked me out because uh, because he was like, who do you think you are? You can skip class for a day. And uh, and I ended up um, actually taking a lot of my classes online and in in class um, with my peers. So. so so sophomore through senior year of high school, you took mostly online they so had online? F- freshman pretty much oh, freshman. immediately freshman through senior year I had I, I went to my same public school an amazing school but I took my classes partially online and then I would I would audit classes I would mm-hmm. take classes um, like regular with some of my peers and and what's this guy's name or woman's name Art? <laughs> I don't even remember Smith Jones somebody uh, but uh, whoever you are you know who you are exactly bad move exactly as far as I'm so so <laughs> Are you an artist too? Do you like No, to- I'm you know what it's so funny. I I my dad's an ER doc and mm-hmm. I'm so much more science minded. I'm so much more excited and interested in space and you know we even we're talking about quantum physics before which is something that blows my mind and I just love learning about how things work, how things are built and that's kind of what led me to coding. Um, but my mom's an artist and so I never ended up being 
I never ended up, th- I never imagined, sorry, it's the tequila talking. Uh, I we, never we imagined that, um, that I would end up in a creative industry, especially yeah. one like fashion, which at 15 years old, uh, my life was very unfashionable. And then all of a sudden I was in this So how did they, industry. did somebody find you? Did they see you? Did you apply to some modeling thing or how, how does it work? It found me. I mean, me, I, I, was, I just can't remember. My, my, do you remember when you were discovered as well, a model? Yeah, I mean, I was more of a was, hand model. Yeah. You know, so it's a, I've got a great head of hair there. I, oh, yeah. you, you know, you could If you're you going to be short, there. at least get you some hair. You know, so, but tell me, how did it happen? It happened pretty, um, pretty much out of like a, a movie. You know, I was walking in the mall wearing Birkenstocks and... Wait, I'm sorry. This is embarrassing. I don't want to... A Birkenstock. What's a Birkenstock? A Birkenstock is a yeah. is a shoe that's gone in fashion, then out of fashion, then it's back in fashion again. So do, do they train out Stock X Birkenstock? It, not at all. They it's do got not. Stock in the name no, Birkenstock. Birkenstock. Listen. Yeah, it's a no. Birkenstock in a trade, but otherwise. So, Birkenstock X. Okay, guys, by the no, way, okay. for anyone out there listening, uh, Josh Luber, the CEO and co-founder of StockX with yourself, Dan, yeah. uh, is in the room, as is Penny Thau, my, my business partner, who's incredible. So, Penny's good. I hear they're, they're going to move up her name to nickel or dime or quarter soon. Yeah, exactly. No, she's no, going to be a whole that, dollar. Yeah, a whole, do- whole dollar. dollar bill. Dollar. <laughs> Wait, so... Seriously, Pat, I, yeah. I'm, I'm being really serious. Like, what's a Birkin? Okay, Birkin socks. So they, they're like frumpy shoes. What's like, frumpy mean? So you're really taking me down the rabbit frumpy, hole. Frumpy, frumpy. They're like, oh, frumpy. you know, they're frumpy. they're not. Um, I, I was not. I was, I, the point is that I did not care about fashion whatsoever. Okay. That was not my world. And anyway, I um, I I fell into this. The, I fell into this world because I was stopped in the mall. I was walking, mm-hmm. you know, down the down the hall in the mall, and somebody came up to me. I was with my friend, and they they said, "Would you ever consider modeling? Have you ever thought about it?" And which sounds like a pickup line. Sounds like a, a stranger danger. Or, like or run the other type. way. So, so it happened to be one of those very rare situations where yeah. it was actually very very credible people, yeah. and so. You know, I, I ended up being a part of this charity runway fashion show, and it and it um it was how I met these agents, and and fast forward to fifteen, that Calvin Klein runway show was really what kind of was my breakout moment. That that launched you out, and now I you know I saw the brands. There's so many brands that, and I'm not an expert on brands, but I, I even pronounce them wrong. You are. Come on, you no you no. I, I start yourself. calling that one that starts with an H like. Hermes or something, but it's, it's wait, let me Hermes. Get, don't worry, don't I just want to say one thing real quick, Dan. Um, sure. I think it's amazing that you are, that you've started this podcast because you have, first of all, built an extraordinary mm-hmm. life and business and you are such an incredible person and you have extraordinary conversations every day. And I think it's amazing that you take your, take the time that you, you don't have a lot of extra time, but that you're taking the time to do this and share these amazing conversations. Um, that's it's yeah. not too dissimilar to why I started a YouTube channel. Well, I, I, and I want to hear about that, but of course, uh, wait, wait, is this, is this what you walked down the aisle? Yeah. Yeah, guys, exactly. Do you wanna, I walked down the aisle. It's a different kind of different You just did that recently. I, I did. But do you see this? Look at you. I know. I was a baby. Look at, well, you still look like a baby. Well, like, you know. You know. You that was that? in 2007. Just for Way context back. out there. I was, uh, it was 2007. Yeah. It is now 2019. And I'm still out there kicking on the You're runways. Still so. <laughs> I have a, I have a question. This always intrigued me. So yeah. You're so You look at you. You smile. You're happy. What is it? Do they tell you just... Hey, you're a supermodel. You walk down that aisle. You got to be like this. To be like grumpy Mis- and, yeah, mis- and is that part of the be deal? miserable? Do they? Is there a training course? And like you know, no, there's no training course. But they do. They, it is. Um, they tell you. The, the, generally, they want you to be kind of serious. the The reality is, is that the industry has changed a lot since I first started. So back in 2007, I, you as a model, were seen and not heard. You were. You know, you mm-hmm. walk down the runway and you were more or less a, a clothes hanger. You were a walking clothes hanger. And, uh, you know, that's just what the, the job was. And it was really over the course of the last 10 years. And my career has kind of been, a, I've been able to be at kind of the, the forefront of this change of kind of social yeah. media. And all of a sudden, as a model, I, I not only am seen, but I can be heard and I can voice what who I am, what I care about. And So um, they probably, what the people probably said, Way back then in 2007, they probably said, just, you know, be seen, not heard and all that. But and yeah. people were afraid if you if you talked that 
that might upset them. And it's probably the opposite, right? It's the opposite. Well, no, yeah, it is the opposite because now it's you know you have to you have to define. Yep. Uh, you don't have to define who you are and what you stand for, but there is the opportunity to. And I think mm -hmm. you know now there's an opportunity to to build a brand, not just to yeah. be kind of h hired a hired gun for somebody else to build a brand or or you know these fashion houses, but as an individual, as a model, um, as anyone. I mean, you don't. So I, so why? I know this is slightly cliche question, but mm -hmm. but I think it's an important one. So why do you do what you do right now? And you do a lot of things. I mean. You, use the modeling as a platform yeah and you have the youtube channel and you have your coding thing and probably some other things thank you Dan. What, what, what's the you know the why inside i want to ask you the exact same question yeah, but i asked you first okay i'll tell you mine first um the why inside for me and it i i i'm 26 years old so i've mm -hmm. kind of i'm only 29 i know we're years. we're yeah. just a couple years apart yeah. um I, i've been you know I started working at 15 and now at 26 uh, I feel like I've really asked myself that question time and time again mm -hmm. over the past kind of decade of mm -hmm. my life um, developing into a person a woman and deciding mm -hmm. who do I want to be why do I want to do these things and for the first part of my career quite honestly my career happened to me and I was just kind of chasing this opportunity not because I felt like it was exactly who I was or what I wanted to leave my impact or mark on the world, but um, it was this amazing opportunity to travel and make money. And at a kind of moment where it, I, I felt a little bit burnt out on it all and a little bit empty by it, I actually, instead of, I realized, instead of walking away from the whole thing and just going back to school, going to medical school and making an impact in the world in that kind of way, how can I use my platform, use my voice to actually do what I what really fills my cup, what really makes me happy, and yeah. that's that's helping others, and and in particular, yeah. uh, young women. So, so the the coding, I don't know, I, you say it, uh, I say it wrong every time because it's the K and the K. <laughs> coding by Co classy. Code with classy. Co code with classy. Yes, with a K code with classy. It's a collective thing. We do it together. So with classy. So you were starting to tell me, and then we were watching the first half of the game. It's actually halftime. We started this podcast at halftime yes. of the Cavs game here at the newly named Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. 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 It's a long story. We won't go down that road now. <laughs> Love it. So uh, you were telling us the why, the, but but was there ever a time like on the your, were you mm -hmm. on the road at 15, 16, 17 by yourself? Oh, yeah. and, and how, I mean, give me some. I idea. mean, I, just to give context, I think I became one of the okay. youngest uh, American Airlines um, concierge key members. Like, mm -hmm. I was traveling so much that I had more frequent flyer miles acquired by the time I was mm -hmm. 18 than, like, most, yeah. you know, retired executives. Like, yeah. I, I was traveling so much. It's crazy. Um, and, and I was, you know, balancing sure. high school. So I kind of had this Hannah Montana double life. Hannah Montana. So, yeah. so when you travel, would you, it, it, you're a minor. Do you travel with? Was there a relative, yes. an uncle, I'm a, a good father? Midwestern girl. Come on. You would think my parents would let me just go yeah, yeah. run so how off. Does that, how does that work? I just don't know. How, how does that work? Yeah. I mean, no, my my mom, my aunt, my teacher, my grandma, like somebody, everyone in my family helped me kind of pursue yeah. this opportunity. And and I'm, I'm so grateful. And, and you know, qu quite honestly, like that is part of, I think, why I was able to, to – survive it in a way yeah. um and and have a really positive experience are there some girls at the time that girls are on, on the road that don't have that support system that are yeah i mean i think that probably exists in any industry um in academics and business but they're not on the road track, but not right? on the road uh, yeah i mean the modeling life can be really tough yeah. it can be really lonely and you're traveling yeah. i mean there have been years where i've been on the road three quarters of the year and and yeah. home a long time yeah so you all know what the stock market is right that's where you trade stocks there's a bid there's an offer there's reporting of pricing that comes out every second of the day that the markets open how come there's never been a stock market of things well I got some good news for you there is now and it's called stock X if you haven't heard about it and 5 million people have who signed up and are trading on it you can actually trade things like sneakers or handbags or watches or streetwear, and they're gonna add a bunch more products on there soon, where you can actually look at live bids, live offers, and look at prices that have been paid, actual trades that have happened. So you can look at the time, the date, um, and the price of the trade. And it, it's pure 
100% visibility. And here's the other thing. StockX authenticates the items or the things before the buyer gets them. If you're a buyer, you won't get it unless StockX gets behind it and is authenticated. If you're a seller, you know you've got a huge marketplace of millions of buyers who could pay market price for your things, the stock market of things. I mean, on the streetwear side, they've got Bape, Supreme, Palace, Kith, those kinds of brands. Sneakers have everything, Nike, Jordan, Adidas, and more. You know, you've got on the handbag side, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Gucci, Hermes, and your typical watches, but Rolex, Omega, Tudor. There's tens of thousands of items on StockX. You get a live marketplace and it's anonymous, it's liquid, it's just like the stock market. The stock market of things, you can download the app at Android or iOS or go to stockx.com. So check out the marketplace of things. I think you're gonna like it. So you have a lot of miles. I mean, and I don't mean this in a bad way, you have yeah. a lot of miles. You're 26, but you're real age. You know, it's probably older, wise. I think I'm older than you. <laughs> right, not me, but you're older, you know. So, so is there, I guess I'll ask you this, when, you know, people come up to you, you're highly recognizable. I mean, how do you? Six foot two, it's hard not to be recognizable. Yeah, six foot two and happen to be a supermodel. I mean, do people come up, you know, you can't be 100% on all day long, 365, 24 hours. So how do you, how do you handle that? I have learned to make time for me and that Mm -hmm. includes time for just like self-love self-care meditating Mm -hmm. exercising sleeping is meditating Um, working for you you know what i i actually it does you know what it does it it, in 10 minutes even you know i'm wouldn't say i'm like a guru but Mm -hmm. in 10 minutes it changes my head my mindset my headspace it changes Mm -hmm. my my energy my everything so I'm on day four of some app i got which app which app? uh calm okay i i love headspace headspace and Cal- yeah i was They're going great. back and forth but but yeah you know i it's so far in four days i'm about one percent calmer one percent calmer <laughs> hey hey just it's getting, progress just thinking 400 days i'll be zero, the, the, you'll be there that's it so, you'll so, be there so though and also the other thing is is my husband i have an amazing uh, partner and and um and i have an amazing business partner and team penny. and Penny. She's right over there. Our, my dollar bill. Yeah. Uh, and AKA so, of inflation. She's yeah. <laughs> she she's calling herself nickel next week. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Nickel, quarter, dollar. So, so, so wait, you, get, you just got married? Yeah, so I just got married this fall. And, mm-hmm. I, you know, life is really good. I can't complain. But, That's good. And you know. You were, uh, so you're 20, were you 25, 25 or 6? Yeah. Married, so just, so your sister, you have three sisters? I have three sisters. Younger, older? One older, twin younger sisters. And what, what's, what do they do? One is in digital marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, she's this amazing creative. She's actually just moved to LA. Mm-hmm. And then my younger sisters are twins. Yeah. And they they both just graduated college. And one is living in South Florida. Um, she's figuring it out, you know, yeah. which I think, honestly, everyone deserves that grace period. It's yeah. tough in and your early 20s. Young. I mean, how old are your youngest? They're, they're 24. Oh, so you wait, you're then, four within three years. Four or? with four within six years. Six years. Okay. So then, um, my other my other younger sister just moved to New York, which mm-hmm. is a big deal, and she's working with me on Code with Classy. Oh, so let's talk about that. Yeah. I started to go down that road a minute. Code with Classy. So you wake up and. I think you said 2013, 14. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I th- we're going into our fifth summer, so mm-hmm. I guess that was 2014 that I took my first coding class, mm-hmm. and I did that because I was really curious about what the hell coding was. I yeah. was like, what is it that all of these entrepreneurs know that they're building, you know, massive enterprise value? They're building mm-hmm. businesses that trans are that are transforming industries that are yeah. making lots of money. What is it that they know that I don't know that I'll, that most of the you know population yeah. doesn't know, and and I was you know I was introduced to somebody at the school in New York called the Flatiron School. Yeah. Um, his name's Avi Flavbaum and and wait, Avi Flatiron did you say Avi Flavbaum? Flat wait spell that. that's uh, that's an oh that's really F-A-L-A-H. not nice. L A F L A F L O Avi, I'm sorry if you're listening to this podcast right now. I, I'm thinking he's the only Avi. Um, I well, he's only Avi Flatbottom in the world, probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But he's in also in Flat Flat Iron or Flat Iron. Yeah, so Flat, flat Iron. Iron School, and okay. it was actually um, acquired by WeWork yep. and or the We Company, and mm-hmm. it's amazing because what I learned in that boot camp of learning how to code was even enough to open my eyes to 
how things are built with code and kind of demystifying this this world of technology and how something is built and how something could be built. Ones and zeros. Ones and zeros, exactly. So Binary code. Do you have like a, do you wake up and or do you dream about a, a certain code cooler and make it more excited than another code? I mean, I, yeah. I mean, listen. I I've learned Ruby. Um, I Ruby learned, on Rails. Ruby on Rails, wow. and I'm learning Swift. Um, and we actually have so in our summer camps we teach. Uh, we teach a different, a few different languages. Um, this summer, we're teaching a Swift curriculum, so girl, yeah. teaching girls how to build web uh, iOS uh, applications. Yeah, it's, just, it's amazing. So, so yes, they so really would they go for wait? Let's get this right. So, you most mostly go in urban core inner city. Yeah. And so you, I know you're in Detroit a couple years back. We've been in Detroit the past two years oh. actually, and it's been amazing. So StockX, uh, you guys generously uh, let some of your female engineers come talk to our girls and it's amazing we have um, we, the Detroit community here is actually first of all amazing on on so many levels every time I'm in Detroit I'm blown away by um, by just the energy here but the girls are this is gonna be our third summer that we'll have camps here so is it, it they're so it, bright just you know for everyone out there too so you're between what 13 so and 13 to 18 okay and and so they sign up Mm -hmm. And it's six weeks? So they apply, and this yeah. summer we have about a 1,000 scholarships. Wow. It's all for free, and we are running summer camps across the United States. Um, we, have, we have a couple in Detroit, um, yeah. and we really wanted to go into cities and, in particular, reach girls that wouldn't have this opportunity otherwise. You know, you can, if you're lucky enough to go to a great school, public mm -hmm. or private, that has coding classes, you're one of the few. And yeah. If you're if you're you know able to go to a boot camp where you know those are those are pretty expensive, so we wanted to really reach girls that wouldn't have this opportunity. So when they come out, you said it's six weeks. Is it six eight weeks or something? So it's two weeks. Oh, it's only two. It's I'm a sorry. two week I mean, intensive. It's two weeks. Uh, like, wait, so, listen, we, we we don't waste time. No. <laughs> so you come out in two weeks. What? Can you really create an app from coding in two weeks? You know what it does? It, it lights the spark for them. Mm -hmm. These girls are so bright. They're, they're teenage girls, 13 yeah. to 18 years old. You are, first of all, these young women are self-selecting in. So they already recognize. Mm -hmm. And this is a generation that is grown up in the world of technology. They don't know anything else. So th they understand how important it is to have the literacy of yeah. understanding how, how code builds at the world around us and yeah. that we need to be a part of that conversation Everything. and we had a little quick discussion on the court here watching the cavaliers yeah game 82 <laughs> um we had a discussion about that code there's even some physicists who actually think the universe mm -hmm. when you go deep down into the quantum levels and stuff mm -hmm. that it almost looks and feels like code mm -hmm. do you believe do you think that i listen i am fascinated by quantum physics and mm -hmm. I don't know enough to to have an opinion but I do think it's really there's so much that we especially with quantum can't fully understand not to digress but I, I recently watched uh, all of these kind of biographies on Albert Einstein and yeah. I, I mean there's I I this uh, this is where I really nerd out and this is where my passions lie is like mm -hmm. I love science I love math I love understanding how and that's really literally how I ended up wanting to learn how to code is like how do things work and that's why I was always so interested in medicine and the body and I don't know I, I th and also business and numbers you know yeah. we were talking about this earlier but financial literacy is something that is also I think a, a core competency skill to be a, a to be a modern woman you know and and for me I have a very female lens on kind of creating opportunities for young women so I you know I definitely think financial literacy uh, skills are something that um, that That's we huge. are really going to work on bringing into the Code with Glossy experience. I think that, that and I really is sort of, oh, I get, what's the word you guys use? You say woke. 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 <laughs> or lit. Yeah. Or dope. Or what's the other one I use? Ask, ask Josh Luber. Josh That's, that's very he, much he, his lingo. He asked his, uh, it's even, I'm talking, <laughs> so I have, I have teenage and kids, and kids are in early 20s and teenage, and they're they're always trying to tea, uh, and I the more I ask the less they tell me yeah sort of like quantum physics you know? <laughs> but do you know this you probably know this do you know that you can't say like when I was growing up it was that's on fire <laughs> the on is gone you ha you could say that's fire <laughs> if you say on you're like forget it you know what I'm talking about you can't say on fire dude Did I you love you that? yeah I mean listen I'm 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 trying to 
pretend I'm young and cool, but I'm you're getting, very, I'm married and you know, I'm old lady still, now. Uh, yeah, 26. That's fire. That's, that's fire, right? See, yeah, there fire. you go. That's fire. So, so are you, so since you like Einstein so much, so is it, yeah. are, here I'm going to do a little quiz with you. Okay. Not a quiz, just an Uh-oh. opinion. Relativity, general relativity or specific relativity? Hmm. It's a tough question, isn't it? That is a tough question. Um, I, I think general relativity. Einstein or Edison? Oh, that's tough. You know where I was today? I'll tell you. Um, well, Detroit? first of all, I'm in, I was in Detroit today, mm-hmm. and I went to the Henry Ford oh, uh, Museum and learned that Henry Ford's like I you know idol was Thomas Edison, yeah. and yeah. that for the fiftieth fiftieth anniversary of Thomas Edison's invention of the light bulb, uh, Henry Ford had moved his entire Menlo Park. Uh, like laboratory from New Jersey to Detroit, yep. and so anyway, I, it was fascinating. Um, Did you see? I, the, oh, go ahead. So, so Einstein, though, I have to say, Einstein. like Einstein, I just think is what I really love about Einstein is that he really, I mean, he's beyond brilliant, but really was at the intersection of of science and creativity, yeah. and this kind of out of the box thinking about and challenging these these you know his academic peers in in the science world especially at that time and had this very creative lens and that's really why i you know i'm from a creative industry but learning how to code really opened my eyes to opportunities that i think other maybe engineers might not see because of my life experiences in a creative industry and i think it's so important to to be well-rounded to keep challenging yourself in new directions because it'll serve you don't you feel like at least I, I'll give you. I feel like every meeting I walk into, there's this this yin yang or this pull between art, science, mm. numbers, creativity, spreadsheets, artists, or whatever Definitely. it might be. It's all the Definitely. same. And it's just this. You know, I always say to people, I say, you know what? If you put your flag in the sand too far to one side or the other, yeah, there's something wrong because you. It's. It, don't, do you feel like it's a I, mix of both? I believe wholeheartedly it's a mix of both, and I, you know, I think. I'm someone also who sees the art in science and yeah. you know I, I I see like even that's why I love you know learning about the world around us and in space you know I, I really love space and I really believe dark matter or neutron neutrinos like what's your what's micro your and macro you know I I definitely um I, I think like understanding like on a on a like the most the smallest form possible like I love understand. I love thinking about how mm-hmm. small you know neutrons and protons and the crazy. But small. then also like the macro scale of our universe and and yeah. like how, how does, much we this? don't understand and don't know. How are we sitting here talking about <laughs> deep space? Well, I love. Well, it. Here's the thing: we could go talk about. I know. Well, let's go deeper for one minute. Okay. So we're sitting on a ball, mm-hmm. which is the Earth. It's in the middle of pretty much nowhere. I mean, I, yeah. You know, used to the, the narcissist that. You, hundreds of years ago yeah. we think you know we're the center of the it's universe but there might be more than one universe which is another oh another yeah issue so do you the, watch rick and morty at all no no I've i bet your sons that. do i love Good. rick and morty do you know Sorry. How, how fast the earth spins per mi- miles per hour i i i have heard this it's like a thousand me. miles an hour i think it's more well okay it's it, it, you may be thinking of Sorry, how Dan. fast the earth goes around the sun which oh, is yeah. like twelve thousand miles an hour Okay. So if you take 12,000 times, a th- so we're on this ball that's spinning a thousand miles an hour going around the sun. It takes 365 days, right? That's a year yeah. going like 12,000 miles an hour. And we're just sitting here like no big deal. And there's air and we're breathing, but put all that aside. The, the, the biggest mystery for me, how do you mm-hmm. describe time? What is time? Uh, that makes me think of our friend Albert Einstein and, yeah. and definitely his, um, it, you know, I, his kind of, the theory of relativity and and just it's kind crazy. of his concept around time and do you so two questions for you one, sure. one would yeah. would you want to go to space uh, for sure and um t- i mean okay on that note to follow up this question um have you ever heard this someone was telling me about it who who is working with astronauts and basically she said there's this kind of effect that happens after someone goes into space and sees the earth rise and this mm-hmm deeply profoundly impacts them and their their the rest of their life and they um studies have shown this of of astronauts who've had this experience or people have gone into space and they come back to earth and they really realize that kind of like holy moly like we are we are so small and insignificant like the problems that we create either in our own head about our own 
lives Sorry. or as societies and countries. And it's just like there's this really powerful it's like a, it's like aha a, moment that a happens. Wo- a wo- a woke or woke. Wo-ing. Yes. Awakening. Whatever. My question for you is: Did uh, you, uh, when, like, you are someone who is so incredibly mission-driven, but also it's uh, you have the saying that I love: f- for more profit. No, for profit, more than profit. For yeah. more than profit. Sorry. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> for you, more, really, wait, well, more profit uh, you, isn't bad either. So you went from gen- for more profit and more profit. For more, yeah. But you went from general relativity into we talked about time. We talked about dark matter for a minute. Yeah. We talked about Einstein. We went right to for more than prop, which actually I've heard from people, whether they do psychedelics or whether they go to mm-hmm. space or whether they have some kind of experience. Yeah. There's, there's those who think of the insignificance, but it's also a lot of those people come back from these experiences saying everything's connected to everything else that they mm. didn't realize. Uh, like there's the, the, the connectivity yes. and the connection becomes like deeper. I, I believe in that. I believe there's such a connectivity between, there's so much that we that we can't even comprehend and there's so much you know I, I to the point of kind of all of it it's like I love being able to think about the scale and scope of like how big our universe is and how much yeah. that we just don't even in our lifetime just, we'll probably still not even understand and and you know that's in my opinion where like God comes into the picture but we will not get into that but then it just makes me think about like in my if I if we are so insignificant and like gen like our life is so short in the scheme of things like why not actually do whatever you can to a enjoy life and b do what you can to help others exactly and you know what Uh, i always tell people you're here anyway you're here like here on the planet you might as well think big and do big things because you're here anyway and it passes and you know there's only really i don't know i said there's only three big decisions in the world for you for a person if you have your health yes okay do you get married decision number one more importantly Mm -hmm. if you do who you get married to mm. biggest decision in the world number three what it is you do mm. for a living and maybe a fourth where do you live everything else yes. is a quiz i love that it's so funny you say that literally someone else was saying this to me that similar it's like the two big two biggest decisions they boiled it down to two who do you marry and where do you raise your family or where do yeah. you choose to live and and yeah. you know i think the other factor is like what do you do and i think that you know we're lucky to to do things that we love and you yeah. are you know I think that to that point of you're someone who takes a lot of risk and I think that's incredible you like you build big you Uh, I mean you've single-handedly like changed an entire city and millions of people's lives it's it's it's, it's pretty amazing if you can can motivate a lot of people to do you know the thing that makes makes the world better and they feel good at the same time then it's sort of like a win-win but I'll tell you what I think that um when you think of you go to kindergartner or kindergarten mm. and they give you what 128 colorful crayons and you graduate with one number two pencil yeah so the system sometimes takes people and ken robinson who's the great englishman i think he lives in la now you can go see him on ted best ted talk ever. okay i'll check that out but he um he talks about this how the you know systems were made to sort of put people in a box mm-hmm. and that's why people there's some obviously a lot of creative people in the world but not as many as there otherwise would be and yeah god we could talk for hours and it's one last important question yeah well no i mean i think that's an important question though and it's it comes back to you know education which is something i i care a lot about and i feel lucky that i've been like, like someone who's training been, all these girls to code tra- you, know. you know i'm someone who's been able to be a student of life and a and a citizen of the world and been able to you know i i'm a curious person so i'm constantly asking questions and learning more even if i'm not in a traditional school environment um and i i want to to help other girls realize how much is out there, how much they have the potential to do and be and build. And, and you know, I think there's not enough of that message in our education system. And I agree. You know, women, you know, when people say to me, would you invest in, in women-owned business? Of course, yeah. no, without a doubt. In fact, Warren Buffett said something interesting. Mm. And he, he said that, you know, his, he's really optimistic about the future of our country because mainly – you had 50 percent not even 50 take mm-hmm. out minorities and women look what we've done with about 25 or 30 percent of the population yeah and now you deploy a hundred percent of the brain power of the population yep look you know, out the future should be should be brighter the, the, so if here's you, the most important question i'm gonna ask you yes cat in a hat or green eggs in a hat Ooh. tough question well i love dr seuss um yeah. so i'm gonna say i love uh 
Oh, that really? Tough this questions. is how we're gonna end it. This is no, a I tough question. Okay, okay. okay. I also love Shel 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 Silverstein. Um, another what's the, what's his like it, elementary school poet. What's his or her book? Is it a him? Or? Um, it's a him. Okay. But okay, I'm gonna say Cat in the Hat. Love Cat, Cat in the Hat. hat. Mm -hmm. Thing one and thing two. Thing one and thing two. So here's I always we we name this the speed of the game and what what we mean by that, you know, it can be a little bit different depending on who's sort of interpreting it. But what, yeah. do, what when you see that. Because I ask every guest this. Yeah. What does that mean, the speed of the game to you? Well, you know, first of all, I feel a little bit like I'm cheating because I do know uh, an inside track on on maybe what it means to you. But what it means, what my immediate kind of thought was that is that exists in every industry, yeah. the speed of the game. And I feel really lucky that I've been able to have a front row seat in my industry and seen the scale and magnitude and the speed of the game of fashion, of retail, of business, of of art, of, you know, and then also been able to sit front row in so many other industries and yeah. kind of see the speed of the game. And so I, from what I understand, uh, you know, the speed of the game in basketball, when you sit at a game and you see these these incredible players up there um did they, you see that so you sat the first half i sat the first half uh, well, and we're gonna go catch that? the last half of the last quarter yep. of the last game of the season oh 622 yeah. are we winning or what anybody know the score we'll see but actually I'm use that say as yes speed of the game do mm -hmm. you think we're winning it's close. You know what I think? I think you're going to have a great 2020 season. Well, I, I hope so. I hope you come back and watch a game once because we'll have another great. 2019 season? I guess we're 2019. Well, 19, I'm living 20. really into the future. The 1920. Right. 2019. Actually, 1920, score, yeah. What's the score? We're not winning. Oh, you're still looking? No, I said we're not winning. You know, maybe we should. I have an idea since we are in the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Yeah. Maybe next year we put up the the score the score and the clock. What do you think? Oh, that's a Oh, I guess we're not winning currently. You know what year. I do really respect? You have the game playing in the bathrooms uh, yeah, the ba <laughs> in your lounge, which yeah, that's true. I really respect. I was yeah, like, oh, this is very handy. It's usually better. Don't have to miss a minute of the game. <laughs> Sometimes you want to miss the bathroom. But, but yeah. next year, we're going to get a great pick, draft choice. Amazing. Or two of them, actually. We'll, we'll put it with our great start with Colin Sexton and yes. Jetty Osman. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. But You'll get there. Um, my question for you, though, or, or yeah. what I wanted to say on the speed of the game was, so we use basketball as like a example. You could be a great college player. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can know the game, you can have great basketball IQ, you can shoot, you can rebound, you can have size, speed. If you don't have speed, if you don't have speed, you can't play. Mm. So I sort of feel like that in any business day because the information is moving so fast because of technology, right? Yeah. Faster and faster. But not only that, the pipe is bigger and bigger, the, the you know, whatever it's coming in, right? It's yeah. come to you in, in fiber or pipe. What, so there's more coming and it's coming faster. So if you can't keep up with the speed, you can't play. Mm -hmm. And I think whether it's probably modeling or business or coding or mortgages or stock X or whatever it might be, yeah. that's the speed of the game. And you've obviously kept up pretty well. You're only 26. I can't wait Thank to see you. what happens. Well, it's very, very kind, especially coming from yourself. I'm oh. incredibly honored to be well, to I'm, be here and, and to learn from you. So thank, thank you, you for having me. I'm honored to have you and to behead you. And thank you very much for coming back next yes, year. Yes, 100%. Great. I can't wait. I, I, I'm a big fan of Detroit. I'm, I am love any chance to, to swing through the Midwestern neighborhood. Well, look, and I know that the Josh Luber over there, guy that founded StockX, co-founded and with Greg Schwartz and he and a few others and he is uh he's got a lot of plans for you you have a lot of plans for Co. yes yeah, so yeah, i'm a big fan of stock x and i think uh for any ladies out there listening you know it's it's not just for the guys there's a lot mm -hmm. of amazing opportunities to buy amazing quality pieces you know there's it's it's hard to find and know where to go and uh to find amazing watches or handbags yeah. and stock x has the best in class i don't need to tell you you already know this whether you're selling the or best buying, in right? class selling, selling or, or buying yeah. uh way to um to buy these amazing goods so and ladies check it out with visibility of the pricing and authenticated yes so hey i'm just you know we'll break into that commercial but <laughs> yeah. no i'm i'm a believer so you're heading back to new york i'm heading back to new york tonight oh, i know That's do good. you come to new york a lot yeah probably like five times a year okay so i actually have to be in new york friday was it thursday or friday thursday or friday yeah we had to be there. is the draft in new york this year the draft is usually in new jersey but the lottery is in the that which is a bigger yeah. thing is in chicago and it's in five weeks five weeks from tonight wow we'll see what happens i'm nervous Thanks. Fingers crossed so, for yeah. you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, Dan. thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Really and, appreciate you know, it. 
Another great Midwest. Yes. Did you, it's wait, wait, St. Louis. Did you consider? Is that called the Midwest? Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I just know the Midwest. First of all, we're Central Time Zone, which is proper Midwest. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, we're, um, in the east, we're in the western end of the East. <laughs> yeah, you, right. you know, you East Coaster, you, yeah. you big city kids out here. Yeah, I just saw you know when you're in the Great Lakes area. Oh, the Great Lakes and Midwest. Are you really? Yeah, it's Midwest is big. I mean, Midwest it's Iowa, is big. Right? Missouri. It's a big country, it you know, and I, I um, was in Texas recently, and I was like, wow, this te Texas is big, too. Texas like, th this country, big. there's so many kind of microcosms within our country. It's it's amazing. And it's, it's it's crazy. I, it's a melting pot. It's a melting pot. So, well, thank you, Carly, again, and thank you, Penny. Bye, you guys. Thank, thank, you, thank you for listening. And, and uh, thank you for watching another episode of The Speed of the Game. And remember, if you can't keep up with the speed of the game, you can't play it.